Vex followed the human escorts into the gleaming conference room, his mind racing as he reviewed all he had seen and learned so far. Commander Holden greeted him warmly at the head of the table, flanked by a dozen others, scientists in bright blue robes, and stern-faced generals in imposing dress uniforms adorned with medals. Admiral, I trust your stay has been comfortable so far, Holden began. Vex nodded respectfully. Please have a seat, we have much to discuss. The group delved into technical discussions that stretched Vex's understanding. Detailed holograms displayed exotic materials, fields and reactors far beyond anything in the Empire. Questions were answered freely, yet Vex sensed omissions in their explanations. When he inquired further, smiles grew tight and the conversation pivoted elsewhere. After one scientist directed Vex to an observation deck. Below, engineers worked, assembling an interstellar vessel larger than any two Krell carriers welded together. His guide spoke proudly of planned colonies, trade routes and defense networks, that seemed more akin to a flourishing empire than a single world. That evening, Vex dined with Holden alone. Your people have achieved wonders, he said carefully. Yet I feel a certain dot 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 selectiveness in what is shared. No technology springs fully formed. Holden took a slow sip of wine. We don't see you empire as a threat, and knowledge is power, as you well know. We give according to trust built, and we wanted to show you small part of our capabilities. Your mission saw that lacking. What assurances have we that insights given would not be turned against us? Vex looked down, chastened. You are right to question our motives after deception. I can only plead that my eyes are now open and offer myself in earnest of the Krell's peaceful intent. Over the next days, Vex studied blueprints and assisted engineers, only on medical fields. Yet even simple diagrams heightened perceptions of how far humanity had ranged ahead. Worse, rumors swirled of scientists disappearing to secure facilities. At night, Vex tossed at visions of Earth, dominating the stars through might and guile. Vex learned that Commander Holden is planning to use prototype Starlight Drive vessel to transport near the Krell home world as a demonstration of humanity's advanced technological capabilities. It greatly troubled him. Vex was afraid that such an overt display would provoke reprisals from the Krell Empire, jeopardizing the fragile diplomacy between the two species. Storming into Holden's office in an agitated state, Vex saw that the commander was coordinating preparations for some unknown urgent situation. In a tense outburst, Vex accused Holden that by revealing humanity's full military might through the Star Drive prototype, he will expose the Krell's vulnerabilities to all. Vex feared that the Krell would not take such a direct show of force lightly and would feel compelled to retaliate in some way. Holden whirled on him. And who brought this about through covert infiltration? We wish only peace, yet cannot ignore belligerence on our borders. This meeting is over, Admiral. Commander Holden strode onto the bridge of the Mercury, taking long, purposeful steps toward the viewscreen. Any sign of the Krell ships yet, he said, looking at the crew with his hands clasped behind his back. Just coming into visual range now, sir, said the ensign at the sensor station. Reading a group of vessel appears to be of Krell design. The viewscreen flickered to life, showing the spiky shape of a Krell ships in the distance. It was hanging just on the edge of the neutral zone, awaiting their response. Open a channel, said Holden. A Krell face appeared on the viewscreen, its large eyes blinking slowly as it studied them. I am Commander Holden of the Earth ship Mercury. You requested communications. Greetings, Commander, said the Krell in a gravelly voice. I am Delegate Drun of the Krell Empire. We wish to begin an open dialogue to resolve tensions between our people. Holden studied the alien face carefully, looking for any hints of deceit. The Krell had proven themselves untrustworthy in the past. Very well, state your purpose, Delegate. We seek to apologize for the actions of our covert operatives on your world. Holden did not believe for a second that the Empire wanted to apologize, but an apology was a start, if sincere. Your words seem genuine, Delegate. However, words alone will not remedy the damage done we must have assurances such actions will not be repeated. Of course, Commander said Drun. If you are willing, I propose we continue our discussion face to face. A small sign of good faith between our people. Holden considered the request carefully. 
A meeting, he already had meeting with Empire's Council, but refusing could damage the possibility for real dialogue. Very well, I am willing to receive you and a security escort on the Mercury, but no weapons will be permitted. Naturally said Drun. The Krell ship maneuvered closer and two Krell emerged in the Mercury's transporter room, escorted by security. Greetings, delegates. This way to the conference room, he led them down the corridor, noticing how their heads swiveled to study every detail. Their questions began immediately. Fascinating vessel commander, tell us of its capabilities. Holden gave a brief overview of the Mercury systems as they walked, carefully omitting any militarily sensitive information. But the Krell's questions seemed focused only on technology, not reconciliation. Your transporters are most interesting, said Drun. Instant travel without vessels. You have come far in a short time. Holden found the comment strange. Every species advances at its own pace they entered the conference room and took seats across the table. Now, let us discuss how the Empire can remedy the harm done by infiltration, said Holden. What assurances and reparations do you offer? But Drun only smiled slowly. We wish only peace between us, Commander. Tell me more of your deflector systems and their theoretical applications. Holden grew suspicious. Their questions were probing too deeply into human technology with no reciprocation. Delegate, we did not come to discuss systems. How will the Empire make amends? Drun's large eyes narrowed slightly, the thin membrane of his eyelids shutting fractionally in a subtle expression of defiance. Commander, you must understand our perspective. Your world was emerging rapidly into the wider universe, whether by your choice or not. Progress and change are inevitable. Holden rose slowly from his chair, his jaw clenched tightly as he struggled to contain his anger. This Krell and his hidden agenda had confirmed every suspicion. Enough of your deceptions and half-truths drun. We both know your so-called advisors infiltrated our space. You are not here to discuss diplomacy or reconciliation in good faith. Your questions have aimed only at extracting information about our technology for your own gain. He took a step towards the Krell envoy, his voice dropping to a cold, stern tone. I agreed to this meeting as a show of willingness to overcome past disputes, but it is clear now your empire has not changed its ways. You do not seek cooperation or even acknowledgement of wrongdoing. This conversation is over. You and your escort will return to your vessel immediately. Drun rose, still attempting to maintain an air of polite discourse, despite the situation rapidly deteriorating. Commander, I understand your stance given past events, yet urge reconsidering the benefits of partnership between our people. You will leave, now Holden cut him off with an authoritative finality that allowed no further argument. Holden escorted them coldly to the transporter room, waving them away the moment they solidified on their ship. As it accelerated into the distance a chill ran through him. Something in the Krell's words and interest in technology over reconciliation unsettled him deeply. Their meeting had revealed more deception, not good faith, and Holden feared it was only the beginning.